Hello fellow unicorns, welcome to another video and before we start with today's video make sure to subscribe to my channel and to click the little bell button next to the subscription button to get all of my latest video showing in your sub boxes and get notified of all of the latest uploads and uh, while you're hearing this I, I'm probably in Japan doing my well business pleasure travel exploration vlog so you'll be able to see that as well in a couple of days and let's get back to the real deal and that is that our current campaign of these playing cards has reached its half of being funded so if you guys would like to fund this and support us in this megalomaniac card design project please make sure to click the little link down below and support the campaign of the twisted wonderland playing card sets illustrated by me and hopefully if this project gets funded i will be able to go on and create a manga to tell the real story because I wanted to create something, a product of fantasy playing cards that would serve as a prequel to my story, but also to be a meta representation of how this world functions. So it's not just that these cards are a product, it's more of a story plot that their lives keep resetting each time you play another well, game of cards. So this is actually the main plot line in the manga as well. And the only characters that are, well, aware of this are the Joker, the Cheshire Cat and the White Rabbit. And that's all of the lore of the world I'm willing to share right now. So I really have an apology to make to all of you because I have in all of this Pre, pre travel rush, I forgot to upload the King of Clubs. And it took me sometimes to realize that I actually neglected to get the poor guy uploaded and started uploading the next family so i'm really really sorry uh, this is why i will be linking the rest of his family here in the video and beneath the video so you guys can actually connect the story and uh, i'm so really sorry my brain is currently oh, really jumbled up but let's get back to the lore so as i stated previously in other clubs videos the king and the queen of clubs are magical children uh, their father was an alchemist and he became the king of their desolated country by um, providing food and creating stuff out of nothing with alchemy so the people were so grateful that they decided to make the make him their king and his children were literally born with glowing green hair because the color of alchemy magic was green and they were literally raised as his pupils as his disciples knowing all of his magical secrets and alchemy tricks and these twins decided to use magic that was given to them each in their own way so the important thing is to realize that these twins are separate people separate types of persons uh, they come from a very unorthodox family of uh, royalty but it's not technically considered royalty by other royal families so they are free to marry whomever they wish because they don't have this need of marrying other royals because of lands or anything like that and uh, the, the way that they use their magic and the way that they decided to grant some of this knowledge to their uh, jack of uh, clubs is the main plot line for them. And the way they're using their magic is very, very connected to their destinies. So when you see my cards, you usually see the light side and the dark side. And the dark side shows how this um, story worked out for them. It shows some hints of their potential future and if the future is grim or not. But it's all very subtle. It's all very um, subtly hinted. So not everything is going to be spoiled for the story. 
as for the sister for the queen of clubs she decided to use magic the way she always wished and was actually frowned upon she she was always taught to practice magic carefully that there are always consequences that she shouldn't abuse it for her own personal pleasure or games or anything like that but she constantly wanted to test her limits she always wanted to see what she can do with magic and go unpunished so she created a uh, animatronic well living gold dragon pet that would be there for her just for fun she created a, a magical mirror that would always keep her young and beautiful she just played around and created a ton of different artifacts that would help her in everyday life and that's something that's highly frowned upon by their father by her uh, brother and this is where the opposite sides of the two twins start showing the brother was always the uh, meticulous student he always wanted to go after all of the rules of magic but something happened something really devastating happened and this is hinted in his dark side um, he loves his sister he really does but sadly something really bad happened and suddenly he found himself having to bend the rules of magic he had to comply and turn himself into his sister from time to time just wear her face and try to pretend to be her whenever she would literally run away with her boyfriend and just disappear for a while and just he didn't want her to go to to just have trouble with their father or or he didn't want to uh, have this um, bad image of her within the people he didn't want the people to start doubting the rulers and go into panic whenever she's on her excursions so this is the only way for him to keep the family name clean and to keep the kingdom from crumbling into itself so this is something that is very hard for him he has to be always the responsible one and that will take a very huge toll on him and as i told you guys before um the male characters have a very specific pose in each card and each ruler has a staff that has their own symbol on top and that has a dagger pointing to the dark side at, at the bottom so this is the basics of the lore part and now let's talk more about the actual drawing part i know that all of you might have so many questions regarding the tools that I use, the techniques that I use, so I'll try to answer some of these questions in this video as well. Um, a lot of you ask me about uh, Copics and how expensive they are and how to use them properly, so I'll try to be as brief as possible and repeat myself i guess yes copics are very very expensive they are used mostly by people who um have turned their art into a business so when you have something that you can charge or you have art that will be turned into money you will use that money to buy the copics and that's pretty much it if you already have copics and really wish to save them um, I recommend for you to uh, always use this this particular technique of shading where you have two shades of each color for example the skin color and then you have the darker shade and you use them wisely um, I usually fill out the entire area of uh, surface I'm coloring and when I want to have a shaded part I use templates and use the darker shade of the color to just fill in those areas those specific darkened areas and that's it so this is basically cell shading you need only two shades of a single color or for a single surface and that's like the basic 
basic cell shading. If you want, you can add two or three shades of each color, but that will require you to have two or three markers of those shades, so that can become expensive. And uh, the reason why I'm using Copics for this particular project is because all of the Copics have this coloring system where you have particularly specified colors for each marker. They each have a color code, they have color sheets, um, every color is specifically created to stay the same so you always know which color you're using where and that's something that I really need for this project because both of the king and the queen for example have the same shade of green for their hair and if I was using some sort of watercolor palette or something like that they probably wouldn't end up looking the same because the green I would be using probably would be mixed in with another shade of green more or less or maybe I would add yellow or brown to make it look dirty or something like that like for realism and sadly watercolors are bad if you want um, this manga anime looking consistency but for single illustrations it's okay to use watercolors but for this particular project where I needed crisp, clear, flat surfaces of specific identical colors, I had to use Copics. So hopefully this will answer some of your questions. And if you guys have any other questions regarding techniques or anything else I could turn into tutorials for you guys, please make sure to leave a comment down below and enjoy the rest of the video. Thank you guys so much and see you guys next time. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you would like to learn how to draw manga please check out my book Manga Crash Course available in four different languages as well as my latest book Manga Crash Course Fantasy.